Welcome back everyone. We're finally having a look at what apparently some of you have been waiting for, I might be a lot of people been waiting for, which is the IKEA Tilreader portable induction cooker. Uh, this is 69 bucks from IKEA and it's currently in stock in the Perth warehouse. It took me six months to get one. I kept trying because I lived miles away. Uh, I've been trying and trying and trying and finally I just drove up there and they didn't have it. So I had to drive back three or four days later when they got more stock and I got myself one. It's been sitting there for a while. I wanted to uh, test it out. Now let's have a look at it. Alright, so first things first, the actual unit itself looks a fair bit smaller. That's about 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters. The others usually come out uh, a bit more. So that's definitely interesting. Now it's also a fair bit thicker, which is very strange. But I mean, maybe they've got some different cooling or something in there. All four of the legs are rubber. That's really good. We can see there is a big fan there that looks like it's about 120 mil. Uh, we have a hook at the top actually, because IKEA have it demonstrated as hanging up. I wonder if my focus is working today. I did not check my focus mode. Uh, I think my focus mode's fine. They're probably the right buttons. Again, really glossy top. I don't like that. I don't like the fingerprints. I don't know why they don't have match. Maybe it's just because it's glass. There are certainly other things they could do. Um, it's not too heavy. It's fairly light. It feels like a good quality plastic. Model to a reader 404-93509, rated for 2,000 watts. Uh, we're going to test that. Now, we're also going to test it with something that we'll have two products in one video. This is the Arlec Grid Connect PC191HA. This is the black version. Uh, I realized I didn't actually have any power metering sockets left at home, so I quickly ran and grabbed one of these. It's not flash yet, but I've just added it to a spare phone I've got so that we can track the energy. Let's have a look at this and do the standard tests. All right, so first and foremost, let's have a quick look at the user interface. I will have a quick gander at the menu. Uh, it's not a menu, is it? It's a user manual. Also doesn't say that, doesn't say anything on there. So the buttons, we've got the heating area there, which it describes as 175 millimeters. So about half that. Uh, if that's the entire heating area, I'll be impressed, but we're gonna test that too. The main thing is the buttons. We've got on off, power level, and child lock. So it's lacking a lot of the other features. You can see there is actually an equivalent here. So if that's focused, hopefully. Uh, you've got the amount of wattage each one should draw. There's no Celsius or um, freedom unit setting or anything like that. So I think that's good and bad because it's not realistic. It's really, really uh, indicative. But let's chuck just a big thermal mass on there. And ooh, actually, we'll see what it does first. We'll make sure it errors out. We turn this on, we'll be able to see here what it's drawing. I haven't actually tried this app in a long time now because you know how much I hate it. Uh, Arlec, Dita, Grid Connect, whatever you want to be called is terrible. I'm just hoping I can still flash this one, otherwise I'm going to smash it with a hammer and take the bits out of the inside because they're more useful than this is as a product. Looks like it doesn't update very quick. That is fucking excellent. But I don't, I don't want you, no. That's half the reason I hate it. Okay. It might update quick, but we're not drawing any current, so. It's not very happy not having thermal mass on there. Let's give it some. Is that the child lock? Alright, comes with child lock turned on by default. Maybe a safety feature, maybe once off. Now we can turn it on. It's currently at zero, all right, so there's no real, it doesn't, on doesn't start a cooking. I like that, I think that's actually a good feature. That goes hand in hand with the small size, the hanging hook, and those rubber feet are really grippy. Now, 
There is a background noise that makes me want to shoot myself. Sorry for the noise my fridge was just making. Hopefully you can hear that. That's hugely irritating. Um, you could probably hear clearly stop then. I'll try to amplify a little bit maybe. Uh, and I'll make sure I don't use the background noise reduction on that bit. So, let's see. You hear the fan going. The fan really doesn't have great bearings either. So this should draw 150 watt on level 1. Does this want to update? There's a weird ticking to... Okay, now it's actually drawing power. I don't know what that ticking was. Okay, so it does error out. The ticking's like a test, maybe. Sorry if I just bumped the camera. So it either looks like it's drawing about 3 watts. Really need to get this to refresh when it's actually in that heating phase. It looks like this is also doing what a lot of the other ones do, that the NE doesn't. Uh, I'll put the link below to my others. This is like my sixth induction cooker now. Only 69 bucks, so quite affordable for an induction cooker, but a lot of them do this alternating on and off. That actually says it's drawing 726 watts uh, in that heating phase. So, it's probably an average of 150 watts over a time period of, say, two or three minutes because it's doing that variation. So let's see at what temperature it stops doing that. I shouldn't say what temperature, I should say at what setting. It's, uh, it's not a temperature. I don't have my thermal gun here, but we'll be able to tell when it's 100 degrees because that'll be bubbling its balls off. It's running 1000 watts here very frequently. So it's nearly, nearly on par. So it looks like it can control its power to some degree. It was drawing only 700 watts before, that might have been a slight misreading. But it is capable of sitting there, what I think is yeah, going to be setting 5, is continuous at 1100 watts, and it is nearly bang on. We'll go to 6. Sound changed slightly there. We're waiting to see this wattage increase. I wonder if I can just refresh this. Uh, it refreshes when it wants. This is another reason I hate these terrible, terrible things. Maybe it's still drawing that much. All right, let's go all the way. Oh, it all right. It loops through to zero. That's kind of frustrating. Let's put it up to nine. Oh, the bench is vibrating now. This is a lot quieter than some of the others, I'll give it that. Eighteen hundred watts, we'll give it another minute and see if it's like an average that picks up. Eighteen hundred and fourteen point four. See, I can't tell if this just isn't refreshing or if it's holding out. It seems so unrealistic that it's holding that exact wattage. Just trying to get a bit of steam away from the camera there in case the lens is bobbing up. Doesn't look like it from here. Can't see the screen too well there. What if zero? Wait for it to update and then we'll go straight to max again. What does H mean? Okay. Recommended cookware diameter, uh, 12 to 20 centimeters. Middle rear cooking zone. Yeah, 
what the hell is H? I'm only, I can only assume it's too hot. Yeah, here we go. Residual heat indicator. If display shows H, the cooking zone is still hot. When it cools down, the display goes off again. Use residual heat for melting and keeping food warm. Alright, that's cool. Okay, yeah, I get you. So it's turned off, but it's just saying, hey, it's still a bit hot. Even in this off mode, it's making that irritating noise. Sorry about my fridge noise. So, straight to nine. Wait for this to refresh. Actually, let's go as quickly as possible. So, on, child lock off, power on, straight to nine. Oh, the pot is sliding off the bloody unit. Can you see that thing moving? No. Bad pot. Uh, that's weird. It shouldn't be sliding that way because this counter should be perfectly flat. As should that. Now, it only draws 1800 watts as you saw there again. Uh, that does have me get that off there. Used, it says it's made for 220 to 240 volts, and we're sitting at 233 to 245. Uh, as we pull a bit of power through either the socket or my power board, we are getting a bit of voltage drop, but it should still be able to do what it was doing. Now, it could also be basing it on that initial voltage, uh, there could be some sort of internal regulation or give it the benefit of the doubt. So, at 244 to 245 volts, that amount of amperage is probably going to be 2000 volts. Actually, if we go so 18 and 15 is 18 and 14 and a bit divided by 233 times 244, 1900. So it's still not quite 2000 watts. That's just disappointing. Next thing we're going to look at is how it goes boiling our standard two cup measurement. Do not pour water over electrical appliances like this. As I said previously, basically don't do what I do. But I don't, I don't always think that closely. So now, if we grab the clock, if I can remember how to with this phone. We'll start a timer, and we'll do the exact same thing pretty much. We want to boil two cups like we have with everything else. Oh, let's see how long it takes. I reckon it's actually going to be pretty quick, 1900 watts. What looks like mostly a good design, we should be in for a winning combination there. Now, that's the timer. Stopwatch is what we want, so let's go on, down, start. That's new, that fan has really cranked up. I don't think it was that loud before, was it? So, depends where we call that. I'm gonna say it's about the two minute mark, which is probably average. Uh, didn't look like it was gonna boil much higher than that. I don't know what that was, unless it is a fan, you can hear the fan still going. That was like the fan just shot up and was off to the races then. Unless there's two fans in there, or that was the induction cooker hitting a harmonic. Let's see how quickly it does it. That's induction doing its thing. That is really boiling. This is really taking its time. God, I hate this so badly. I'm even drawing 1500 watts there. I'm going to put some more water in it, so you can get, that's got to be an average. That's another terrible th thing, it should be, you know, average it over a one second read. Pull it ten times in one second, uh, most chips are good enough to pull at least once every ten seconds maybe. You can give it a, a minutely read, 
No, that no. Poll every ten seconds, uh, ten times a second. Give secondary readings. I reckon that's the way to go. What most the others do. I'm gonna chuck some more water into this, just to slow it down a bit, and we'll see. That beefcake fan comes back or if it hits that harmonica again. There we go. It's definitely a fan. And this has to refresh and show a different number. That fan is drawing more current. That fan would typically draw a couple of watts at what at least like three more. Three more watts. Those numbers just don't add up. That's refreshed, so I'd expect that that's going to refresh, but unless it did just refresh slightly, but I'm pretty certain it's pushing 129 before. That water is really boiling now. My suspicion then is that this. Actually, that can't average too much, otherwise when you turn it off it wouldn't drop to zero, it would drop to some lower number. Yeah, so it is... This thing's not drawing as much as it should be. It drew 18 to maybe 1900 watts uh, when we were cooking before. However, since it got hotter, it's only drawing 1500 watts now. So that's probably some... It might have a thermistor or something in there uh, where it's controlling how much energy you can put out when it's already quite hot. Um, the two fan method is interesting. So it's quieter for using up to a certain degree. Oh, that piece is nice. And then it does get louder. What I really don't like is that piercing sound it makes. That is so much better with it turned off. All right, we're gonna do the last test now, which is just to see how big this heating area actually is. So that, I'm gonna quickly grab my ruler. It says the heating area, oh this messy ruler, is 17 centimetres, so it's it's saying the width of those marks, but they're never telling the truth, are they? We learned that before. So, I'm going to get my IKEA fry pan in here, which fits its specifications. I'd, actually, I didn't measure it, but I'd expect the base looks like it fits pretty nicely. And we're going to see how big that heating area is, just using a wet cloth. So, I think there was a viewer that actually suggested a different or a better way of doing this. Uh, I could get a thermal camera too, but a fairly thin pan with a wet cloth shows us very quickly where all the heat is, because that water is going to boil off. So you want it fairly uniform, of course. All right, I'll say that's good enough. That piercing sound is awful. I'm giving this to a friend who's partially deaf because I cannot use this. It is one of the worst features. It's worse than it not actually doing what it describes. So, let's take it up to a six, because we know it's consistent then, and let's see where this thaws out first and measure the size of it. I mean, <laughs> where it boils. Thawing out's kind of close. If it was ice, it would be thawing out. Well, that solves that question. It's drawing 1200 watts, which you'd expect for power level six, and that's good. But that heating area was what I'd put at about 10 centimeters. So, let's summarize this. Let's get this out of the way so you can actually see it again. We have some good features. We have the compact size, uh, good build material, the hanging hook, two levels of fan, you've got the heating mode on there, um, the really good rubber grips, those are excellent features. Terminal with child lock, by default, is interesting, uh, that's only when it loses power, which is cool. Now, the downsides, I feel, are quite significant. It says 2,000 watts, there is no way it's pulling 2,000 watts. It actually pulls lower than that wattage when it's already hot. Uh, so... Bit of deception there, or false advertising if you want to call it, just not doing what it said it would do. Further to that, it is good that, you know, from power level 5 and up, it's consistently on. It's got pretty good control about the amount of wattage it's drawing there. Um, that is another good feature. But this background sound. If I turn the fridge off for a minute. Cars going past, birds tweeting, can't help it. 
That sound is a deal breaker for me. To hear the difference when it's off. That is worlds better. Uh, it's like, you know, oldies won't notice it. It is quiet and it's a low frequency, but it's piercing my brain like a fucking cheese grater. So besides it not actually drawing as much power as it says, then drawing less and having that ear, ear piercing painful squeal, I don't want this. I don't like it. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's also a much smaller element than it says it is. It advertises, I'm going to double check this, 2000 watts. It does not do that. But it also says heating area, cooking zone, 175 centimeters. That can't be where it's saying to cook your food because it says that the recommended fry pan is 12 to 120 to 200 millimeters or 12 to 20 centimeters, uh, which is going to be about four to six inches. So it just doesn't do what it advertises to do. I'm going to give it to my mate. He can use it up in the city because he does all sorts of cooking. 69 bucks. It's fine for someone who can't hear that sound or doesn't need high temperatures. Uh, I need both of those things. I need to bring things to the boil rapidly when I'm making sauces and soups, mostly sauces, and that piercing sound really kills me. So he can have it. If those things don't bother you, go for it. Um, I'd reckon it's quite durable. It's definitely quite safe. Leave your thoughts below. If there's something else you want me to test with it, let me know. I'm more than happy to. Same as this uh, Arlet Grid Connect D to whatever PC191HA garbage. The app's crap. It keeps requesting for location. It doesn't need it. It keeps wanting to create an account. It doesn't refresh too frequently. It's, it's really a pain in the ass all in all. So that's a no for me on both of these appliances. There's the box for the thing not to buy. Any other questions, you know where I am. These are becoming probably two weekly now because I'm running three channels. So there's also the gaming channel, which is going nowhere fast because I don't really play much games or put any effort in. And then the Tinkers channel, which is where I'm going to start smacking these things with a hammer more often. So if you want to see this pulled apart, have a look over there. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time.